Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. The presenters for the webinar today are Keith Gates and John Georges. Keith Gates has recently been appointed to the NPD Program Manager position. He spent five years in his previous assignment as Project Manager for FTA's Transit Economic Requirements Model, overseeing production of reports to Congress. He has also worked on transit asset management and on the NPD. He was a senior program officer at the Transportation Research Board before joining the federal government. He grew up in Silicon Valley and is a graduate of Indiana's Purdue University. John Georges is the director of the Office of Strategic Planning and Analysis at the Federal Transit Administration, which includes the National Transit Database. John joined FTA as a Presidential Management Fellow in 2005 and later spent five years as NTD Program Manager. Prior to joining FTA, he worked at the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, where he represented the United States in discussions with Canada and Mexico on developing the transportation section of the North American Product Classification System. He holds a Bachelor's in Economics and Geology from Case Western Reserve University and a Master's in Applied Economics from Johns Hopkins University. In his free time, he enjoys travel and has a lifetime goal of visiting all 397 U.S. national parks. And now I will turn the call over to Keith. Hello, America. Uh, greetings from Washington, D.C. The topic here is how to adjust your 2011 NTD report to accommodate the 2010 census results. Now, for the last 10 years, we haven't had to worry about this because we've been working with the 2000 census results. It's time for the change, and unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time to do this, and we have some fairly short deadlines to get this done. We really only just got this information, the maps of the UZA areas, and we have to do it for the 2013 apportionment, so uh, you're going to have to bear with us and, and work with us in terms of getting these changes uh, made. Now, the first deadline that you're looking at is uh, July 15th to um, submit to us. Uh, we have moved that deadline back to July 30th in an email that you got through the NTD system. There were significant changes in the 2010 census and uh, the way that they define urbanized areas. There are 36 new ones. Four of them were defrocked and are now back to being uh, urban clusters. Um, 27 are going over that uh, magic 200,000 in population, which means that they won't be able to get operating funds from us anymore. Under uh, current law. Uh, under current law. That's right. That could change. Um, there were no UZA mergers, so they didn't join any of them. We keep expecting them to do that with San Francisco and San Jose, but nope. Uh, and there was only one UZA split. Which one is that? Uh, Williamsburg, Virginia split off from the Norfolk, Virginia Beach urbanized area. And, of course, you can go to the FTA website and uh, get all the details there. As you hopefully know, the requirement is that if you use 5307, that would be our urban um, grants, programs, uh, funds that you uh, need to report to the NTD. Now, it's not based on the size of the UZA that you happen to be in. The rule is you have to do it the year after you apply for those funds or the first year you draw down the funds. But in practice, that's pretty much the year you start getting those funds. Now, you report based on your fiscal year. We bin those up into three basic categories. There's the fiscal years that start July 1st, that start October 1st, and that start on January 1st. And there may be a few that are different from that, but we kind of lump them in with whatever they're closest to at that point. And you know what your fiscal year is. It certainly says in your, um, your NTD analyst can help you if you have any problems with that. And you get four months after the end of your fiscal year to audit your data and report it to the NTD. If your fiscal year starts on October 1st, or it's January. January. January, okay. And you have to keep reporting for as long as you have 5307 funded assets. And the typical example is if you buy a bus, you're on the hook to keep reporting to us for 12 years. If you buy a train car, 
25 years, and if you buy a, a station, pretty much eternity, I think. 50 years? No, if you buy a building, it's uh, as long as you keep the building. Ah, okay. How do you get a reporting ID? Well, you go to our website, www.ntdprogram.gov, uh, click on what is the NTD, and fill out the application form. Uh, one of our analysts will contact you, and uh, you, we'll set you up with a, a reporting number. UVAs are urbanized areas. It's one of the ways that we organize the population. Um, there are st metropolitan statistical areas, and there are urban clusters, and there are other designations. But no, we just work with urbanized areas, and that's the basis by which FTA funds transit systems. So every urbanized area has a designated recipient, and if they apply for grant funds, that's where the grants go. Um, so we think by urbanized areas, not so much by states except in the rural program, but that's not what we're talking about today. So every year when we get our budget, we pull data out of the NTD and we apportion that budget to the urbanized areas according to a formula that Congress in its wisdom has passed down to us. Um, and the rule is that that 2013 formula, our apportionment, has to be based on the 2010 census data. The new rule, the new money will apply to the new UVAs, but the old money still applies to the old UVAs. So if you have 2012 apportionment dollars, you continue to spend them as you did in 2010 and 2011, according to those um, geographical designations. Uh, so this is going forward. Timeline is that primary UVA assignments have been made. That is, you can look on our website and and there's a list of what we consider your primary urbanized area to be. You need to start looking at the new UZA maps. It's likely to be the same city you were in before, but the boundaries may have changed. So you need to look at those maps in relation to your service area and determine what areas you serve. That's the first step here. Now, we'll need you to think about how you're going to, to allocate your service data uh, among the urbanized areas that you serve and rural areas. Um, and that's what we're looking for at the end of July, just the plan. You send us a letter saying we're going to do it this way. And then in August, we'll reopen those FFA-10 forms, and you get to reallocate your service data according to this new plan. So this is the website for our program. You can go click in there, and, and you can see the new category on the right-hand side there called Census 2010 Adjustments. And it has the documents that you'll need and links to the census data, or census maps. Our primary urbanized areas are based on the address of your headquarters that, that you give us. If you have problems with that, because sometimes the areas aren't the same as where the headquarters are addressed, then talk to your analyst. So you need to look at these UVA maps to see if you serve any rural areas and if you serve other urbanized areas. You need to identify all the other urbanized areas that you serve. And if you serve a rural area, you need to classify that as UVA0. Our urbanized area numbers are all essentially by population rank, so you know New York's one, LA's two, but zero is urban is rural areas, um, and you need to, to indicate that as a, an urbanized area. Our definition of whether it's whether you serve an area is based on whether you pick people up in that area. So some agencies have situations where they may drop people off in areas but not pick them up that's not counted as a served area. Now in August, we will reopen the NTD system. Uh, you'll get to identify all those UVAs on the B10 form and submit a new FFA10 form. And the sooner you do that, the easier it will be for everybody. So it's not that heavy a lift. We uh, uh, encourage you to, to get on the stick there and, and and not make all our analysts work uh, really late at the end of the month.
So in the meantime, you need to uh, look at what urbanized areas you serve, think about how you're going to allocate the um, service between them. You can find a letter template that we have on our MTD program website, and uh, you can look at what our FFA 10 forms are going to look like so you know what you'll have to fill out. Now, the rules of, for allocating service have changed. They actually changed this year. So in the past, if you had service that connected to two large UCAs, there was a requirement that your, that your service had to be split on the FFA 10 form in between them. In particular, the rule was that for your vehicle revenue miles, if you had service between two large UCAs, every vehicle revenue mile of service physically located in the large UCA had to be allocated to that large UCA. New rules, however, now apply for 2011. So uh, the, the, uh, the, the simplest um, you know, case for describing the way the new rules work is that we essentially now allow you to allocate all the, um, all the service to the primary UCA that is being served by the service. So if you take a simple example of a commuter service that is picking up passengers in the Ostia UCA and is taking those passengers into Rome. So the old rule was that the vehicle revenue miles physically traveled in the Rome UCA had to be allocated to Rome because Rome was a large UCA, over 200,000 in population. But the new rule is now that you determine what is the primary UCA being served by the service. And if you decide that, well, the, this service is really servicing the Ostia UCA, you can allocate 100% of it to Ostia. Or if you decide um, that this service is really servicing the Rome urbanized area, you can allocate 100% of the service to the Rome urbanized area. And that's, uh, that works for a simple commuter service simply going from one UCA to another. Um, for more complex cases, um, we say that you can identify uh, a metho methodology that splits your service between um, all the areas being served uh, as long as it's a reasonable and consistent methodology. And that was the, the words that were used in the Federal Register notice. Uh, and examples of such methodologies could be you could split your service between the areas served on the basis of the vehicle revenue miles in each area or you could do it on the basis of the boardings or unlinked passenger trips in each area, or you could do it by passenger miles, the, the passenger miles traveled physically um, done in each area. Um, or we have even left the door open to other reasonable and consistent methodologies, and that's why in July we would like you to tell us what methodology you're planning on using so that way when we have that narrow two-week window at the end of August where the, the data has to be actually submitted, that that process will go absolutely as quickly as possible. So let's take the example of a more complex service that's servicing multiple areas. So take a commuter service that begins in a rural area, picks up additional passengers in the Rouen urbanized area, and then makes an additional pickup in a rural area, and then finally ends in the central business district of the Paris urbanized area. In this case, you may allocate 100% of the service to the Paris urbanized area because almost all the passengers of the service you know, enter the Paris urbanized area. In fact, it's likely that all the passengers either have begun their trips or ended their trips on the service in the Paris UCA. Um, however, do not allocate 100% of the service to the Rouen UCA. Based on the pickup patterns of the service, it is not reasonable to say that the Rennes UCA is the primary urbanized area being served. Instead, choose some sort of reasonable and consistent methodology to split the service between Paris, Rouen, and the rural areas that are all being served here. So is Paris a designate recipient for 5307 funds? <laughs> we are, uh, we're, we're trying to uh, protect the innocent by not naming any names, but uh, many of these examples are based on real-world questions that we have already received um, you know, to the MTD. And they don't have to get 5307 funds. They can report voluntarily even without that. So the exceptions to this are services funded by the 5311 program. A mandatory rule does apply to the um, services funded by 5311. Unlike before, where we talked about that you have broad discretion to choose who is being served as long as it's reasonable and consistent, if you're using 5311 funding, some mandatory rules apply. And namely, in general, if you're using 5311 money, then the service should be allocated 100% to the rural UCA, UCA0. 
And the exception to this is that you may make a split when operating assistance from both 5307 and 5311 um, is used. Quick examples of how these exceptions work. So the simple example we have is the 5307 urban formula program is used to purchase a bus, and operating assistance from the 5311 program is used to sustain the service through operating assistance. In this case, 100% of the service is allocated to UZA0, as this service is credited to the rural program by its use of 50, the 5311 funds. Slightly more complex case is a commuter service which runs from a rural area into the Timbuktu urbanized area, which is less than 200,000 in population. And operating assistance from both 5307 and 5311 programs are being used. So if you take the 5307 operating assistance dollars used, 40,000, plus the 5307 um, local match, another 40,000, for a total of 80,000. And you divide 80,000 by the total operating expenses for the route, 240,000, and you get 33%. And so in this case, up to 33% of this service may be allocated to the Timbuktu urbanized area. The rest of the service, however, must be credited to UZA0, the rural program, because of the use of 5311 funds. So the third example, the 5311 program is used to purchase a bus and preventive maintenance expenses for the service are paid for from the 5307 program. In this case, allocate this service 100% to urbanized area zero because this service is using the 5311 funds um, for capital expenses. So what's important is the operating expense? So the, what's important is the use of operating assistance. And so if it uses both 5307 and 5311, you calculate the portion that's 5307 based on the percentage of 5307 funds of the total and of 5307 funds plus its local match of the total. Okay. And the rest is then by default allocated to 5311, even though it may not be entirely 5311. Correct. Okay. So for additional questions, we recommend you contact your analyst. If you don't know who your analyst is, you can always go to the NCD Help Desk, or you can contact Keith Gates, the new NCD Program Manager. And with that, then we're going to open the phone lines here for questions.